Financial meltdown with 49 days until the election. Obama offers a six-point plan, while McCain's campaign says he invented the BlackBerry. And his plan for the economy is a commission to study it. Neat. Who better to comment than Bill Maher, host of Real Time with Bill Maher on HBO. Welcome, Bill Maher. Good to, good to see you again, Rachel. Um, so economic crisis, Wall Street is like Thunderdome at this point. Uh, John McCain has reacted by saying he wants a 9-11 commission for the economy. Your thoughts on that? Well, you know, commissions are always something that politicians bring up when there's a crisis. They don't usually solve a heck of a lot. Uh, the 9-11 commission, I, don't, I mean, I'm glad we had it, but, you know, what did it do? It created a lot more bureaucracy. Um, I always thought that was sort of ridiculous and counterproductive to take all these agencies and put them under one roof to create more bureaucracy. You know, like somebody was going around saying, gosh, if we only had some sort of central intelligence agency. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the trick is to get the stuff that's there working the right way. Uh, and somehow John McCain, whose number one economic advisor was Phil Graham, I mean, he's the guy in 1999 <clears throat> who undid the law, the Depression Era law, uh, the Glass-Steagall Act, that really led the way for a lot of this meltdown that's happening. But he's the guy that's McCain's go-to man on, ec on the e economy. Uh, and Alan Greenspan, another one of g the gurus in the McCain camp, who lowered interest rates continually that allowed a lot of this lending to take place that's caused so much of this economic pain. Somehow he's able to now charge in and present himself as the guy who's going to, uh, the sheriff who's going to clean up this western town. It, it would make you laugh if you didn't think people would believe it because he's a maverick. And maverick's exactly what we need. Mavericks, they'll fix it. The other um, McCain economic advisor who I have to say mystifies me, and I probably shouldn't admit that because we've been trying desperately to get her to come on the show and she keeps saying no, uh, but that would be Carly Fiorina. Uh, Carly Fiorina who got, I think, $42 million when she left Compaq, even though Compaq was rather a shell of its former self after she got done with it. Um, Sarah Palin, uh, sorry, uh, Hewlett Packard, sorry. Um, Sarah Palin said that uh, her, her first real specific comment on the economy was that we ought to have no more golden parachutes for CEOs. I don't understand what Carly Fiorina brings to the McCain surrogate world. Why we're hearing so much about her and why they'd want to brag on her experience. That <laughs> you're asking me, I'm on the other team. I don't really know. <laughs> but how about the idea that how about the idea that Sarah Palin is going to be on the case economically. This is the, the person who didn't know what the Bush doctrine was, the one who said that she understands foreign affairs because she could see Alaska from her front porch. Uh, you know, you wonder at what point will it sink in, if ever, to the American public, or will they care uh, about a complex issue and bringing someone to a complex issue who's not a complex thinker? You know, when I heard people say, Oh, that was sort of a gotcha question that Charlie uh, Gibson asked her about the Bush doctrine. Yeah, it's a gotcha question if she's trying to become Miss America. If she's in line to be the second most powerful person in the world, it's not a gotcha question. It's a, it's a reasonable question. Yeah, and, and there remains still this big pushback, though, from the uh, McCain-Palin campaign that if you ask any hard questions, really, on anything, it's because you are out to get her and because you don't think that she's going to know the answer and you're, sec you're, in a sexist way, underestimating her. I, I don't know how long that lasts or if uh, Joe Biden will be, we, will be put, on the, put on the spot as a sexist if he asks her any hard questions during the debate, but I, I, right. I feel like that's, that's not a long-term strategy for marketing your vice president. And, and somehow, if you, you're caught between a rock and a hard place with Sarah Palin as a critic, because if you describe her accurately, there's no way you can do that and not sound condescending, because she's not very bright uh, about matters that, that a person in this position should be bright about, and she's completely not ready to take over this job. I think it's encouraging that you see a lot of conservatives now who are actually saying Sarah Palin is not ready for the job. That would be country first, admitting that, not just closing ranks with the other conservatives and getting behind whoever they put up. The Republicans have put up now, in the last 20 years, Dan Quayle, George Bush, and Sarah Palin. 
Those are three absolute ciphers who had no place uh, in, a, in a national election. And yet, these are the people running under the banner of country first. So, you know, I read David Brooks's column today in the New York Times. I thought it was an excellent piece. But he, said, he does seem to want it both ways. He's willing to say she's not qualified. She's not qualified, and yet somehow if you criticize her, you're being condescending. Well, I, I, don't, know where to, I don't know where to find the place in between there. The Republican uh, conservative base, particularly sort of the intellectual conservative base of the Republican Party, forever and ever, forever and a day hated John McCain. And you cited uh, David Brooks there. It's also Richard Cohen. It's George Will. It's David Frum. There's right. a whole bunch of other conservatives that are now coming out and remembering mm -hmm. that they used to hate John McCain, even though the last six months they were they were nice to him. I wonder if the, if, the, if you think the Republican Party is going to have some unity problems come November. No, I don't really think so, because that's what they're good at. They're, they're exceptionally good at getting behind the guy on their team, no matter who it is. This is what the Democrats are not, have never been that very good at, is sort of just closing ranks, making sure that we all, you know, <laughs> get together on this thing and make sure the outcome is the one we want. So I, I wouldn't count on that with, with the Republicans. Well, we, sh we, we shall see if there's a giant groundswell for Bob Barr. You never know. Could always surprise us at the last moment. Bill Maher, host of Real Time with Bill Maher on HBO. Thank you so much for joining us. I appreciate it. Thank you, Rachel.